Please be seated. I just want to welcome all of you here today. It's a sad occasion, but it's also a special time to share our love for Paula with each other and to let others know how much we cared for her. And uh, we just want to thank you for being here. Hi there, um, I'm Deborah Ross, Jay's wife, um, and I'm going to read a, a scripture and say a prayer. Um, before I do, the Lord brought something to my attention today that I wanted to share with you. I haven't thought about it in probably 30 years, um, but when I became a born-again Christian um, in 91, um, of course, those of you that know me know I'm very radical. <laughs> And so, um, so, of course, my life changed completely uh, at that time. And Paula called me one day, um, and I, I remember just today, I remember this, but I remember at Carmel Village, where we used to live, sitting beside of my bed with the old-fashioned phone hooked to the wall, and she asked me about the Lord. She asked me about my life being changed so radically um, she asked me a lot of questions, and I was able to present the gospel to her. Now, she had been to church before then. Um, as a young woman, she was in church. I think she had been out for quite a while. Um, but after that event, um, I know she got very heavily involved with her church after that. So I, I really hadn't thought about that since that time, but today the Lord reminded me of it, and I thought it was a real sweet um, reminder of that moment. So I want to read a blessing over the whole congregation, but especially over the family, the Gregories, the Counts, the Rosses. And this is the blessing of Psalm 23. Um, and that's another thing the Lord just brought to my um, attention today. So I'm going to read it as I'm reading it as a blessing over you. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want he maketh you to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth you beside still waters. He restoreth your soul. He leadeth you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will feel no evil. For thou art with your beloved Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort your beloved. Thou preparest a table before your beloved in the presence of their enemies. Thou anointest their heads. Family, the Lord anoints your heads with oil. Your cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. So if you'll bow your heads, I'd like to open us up in prayer. Father God, Lord, we worship you. God, we praise you, Lord, because you are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. You are our comforter. You are our strong tower. You are our shield. You are our hiding place. You are a father to the fatherless, and you are a mother to the motherless. And I'll even add that you're our wife and our husband to those who are in need. God, you are everything. You are the great I am. And whatever we need, you are and you will. I thank you for that, Lord, that you dry every tear. I thank you, Lord, that you're the lifter of our heads. I thank you, Lord, that your joy is our strength. 
And I finish this prayer with number 624, which says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deborah, for that wonderful psalm that is meant for each one of us. Right now, I'd like to give all of you an opportunity to take part in this service, any of you who would like to. We all loved Paula. She was a very close friend and family member, and I'm sure every one of us has fond memories of being with her. So I'm going to open this up for anyone who would like to stand and speak out loud and clear and not very long, a <laughs> short time, but just to share some memories that you have of Paula, some of the things that made such a difference in your life by knowing her. Anyone like to begin? Okay. Well, she. Yeah, well. She was a fun loving lady. Anyone else like to share with us this afternoon? Yes. fond personal memories as well. Yes. So uh, there's a lot of memories about Grandma Paula. I left the name one that came to mind this morning. Uh, she had her consignment store. You know, me and my brother, we would either, either get dropped off for a little while as I was doing some work or stop by with him. And we would use that consignment store as a playground. And she didn't she didn't care one little bit. You know, I remember <laughs> one time I was underneath one of the uh, uh, one of the hanger things that had the clothes, the clothes racks or whatever it was. Uh, yeah. underneath the clothes and like I was just scared and yes left and right. And you know, and she would she would tell me, He can't do that here, blah blah blah. And it was just uh it was it was just yeah, I just I just remember all those experiences, uh just being there and hanging out with her and talking to her and you know, her sharing different parts of her life. So Right. Well she put up with you anyway in spite of your <laughs> antics. <laughs> Anyone else? I know that all of us have times that we can remember 
Uh, we may not want to share it with everyone, but uh, all of us have times with her that were very good times. Anyone else? Well, if not, um, we have another, uh, we have a song, a special song, and Brenda is going to sing Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. I'm found, was blind, but now I see. It was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come, and it was grace that brought me safe thus far, and it will be grace that leads me home. When we Bright shining as the sun will have no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I was blind, but now I see. Thank you, Brenda, for that beautiful rendition of what's probably my favorite hymn, Amazing Grace. We can't even begin to understand how wonderful the grace of Jesus really is. Well, as I said before, we're here to celebrate the life of Paula Gregory, our dear friend, our sister in Christ, who passed away on Sunday, October 30 at the age of 81. Paula was born January 27, 1941, and raised in the tiny mountain community of Neely Ridge in southwestern Virginia. She graduated from nearby Hasey High School and then attended East Tennessee State University in Johnson City in Tennessee. She made friendships there that lasted for a lifetime. She and her friends got together for re reunions once a year for decades. And as a young adult, Paula moved to Monroe. In time, she became the loving mother of three children who were all born and grew up in Monroe. She raised them as a single mother for many years. 
Then, for over 30 years, Paula owned and operated the consignment shop on Main Street, and I'm sure all of us are very familiar with that, where she made great friendships with many people in our community. In 2004, she was introduced to Bobby Gregory, who was a friend of some of her church friends, and that same year, she married him. Now, Paula's son, Jay, told me that Bobby was an angel, one of the most godly men that he has ever met. And his mom adored him and said he was the ideal husband. Paula loved hiking, camping, nature, simple times with her husband and family and friends. She was known in the whole community for her gentle, sweet spirit and her gentle spirit, her gentle heart and her church involvement. Her radiant smile would light up the room whenever her children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren were close. Paula's greatest joy was to be with her family. And throughout her life, Paula grew and began to love Jesus more and more. And in 1999, she became one of the 28 founding members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church of Monroe. My wife, Jeanette, and I grew to love Paula as we got to know her as a friend and as a co-worker in our church. She was always a great friend to us and to our whole family. She was an important part of the ministry of our church, and she was always very faithful. If there was a meeting at the church, Paula would be there. And as a deaconess, she was always ready to help church members and others in need and to assist with services such as the communion services and other church events. Paula was greatly blessed, and she was a blessing when she traveled on a mission trip to Central America. She knew that the Lord had a purpose for her life, and as a Christian, Paula realized that she had a part to play in the greatest of all wars, the universal battle between Christ and Satan, and so she became a soldier in the army of Christ. She never forgot that Jesus gave up his throne in heaven because of his love for her and for all of us. She knew that Christ lived and died to give us freedom from sin. The Apostle Paul reminds us of this in Philippians 2, verses 5 through 8. He says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. If Jesus was willing to give up everything, even heaven itself, for us, can't we be willing to give up the things of this sinful world for him? Like you and me, Paula recognized that she was a sinner in need of a Savior, but she also knew that Jesus was her Savior, and she accepted him as her Savior and her Lord. She surrendered her life to Christ and accepted all the truth that Jesus had for her in Scripture. Now, Paula shared this wonderful hope with others as well, this hope of salvation through Jesus Christ. And today, if there's anyone here who has never given your heart to Jesus, I want to invite you to open the door of your heart to the invitation of Jesus. He appeals to us in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20, where he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Jesus loves all of us. He wants to save us. He wants to live with us. And in return, he desires that we love him. The Lord had a wonderful purpose in Paula's life, and he has a purpose for each of our lives, too. Jesus has put us on this earth to be a blessing to other people, to share his hope, and to bring hope to the hopeless, and love to those who are lonely and depressed. And Paula lived that kind of a life. She was always cheerful and kind to those that she met. 
No one ever knew her or ever left her without a smile and an encouraging word. Today, she leaves behind her husband, Bobby Gregory, and her children, Jay Ross, Valerie Wright, and Garrett Ross, and also five grandchildren and three great-grandchildren. Of course, her family and friends are going to miss her greatly, but not for long, because Jesus has promised that he's coming back soon to take all of us home with him and to reunite us with our loved ones. And that's just what we're all looking forward to, isn't it? Being with Paula again. Jesus said in John 14, verses 1 through 3, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 22 and 23, the Apostle Paul assures us that as in Adam all die, and even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. In verses 51 through 55, he tells exactly what will happen. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And when this happens, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? And Paul also writes in 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 through 18, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. And what a comfort those words are. We do have hope for the future. No matter what's happening in this wicked world around us today, we know that God is in control. Yes, in today's world, there are many terrible things happening, worse than they were 20 years ago, worse than they were 10 years ago, worse than they were even one year ago. The news can be very depressing, but there's hope. All these things are signs that Jesus is coming soon. All this darkness will soon turn into a wonderful light. Jesus will take us home where there will be no more crying or dying, but only peace and joy. In Matthew 28, 20, he promised us, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And again in John 14, which we read a minute ago, he promised, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's a wonderful promise for now and for the future. God wants us to enjoy life to the fullest and for us to be a blessing to everyone. Paula lived that way. No one who ever knew her ever left her without feeling better. And of course, we'll all miss her greatly, but we have the great hope of seeing her again soon. And that's what we're all looking forward to, being in heaven, celebrating a great reunion with Paula and with our loving Savior, when we will truly ever be with the Lord. Please pray with me. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful promises you have given us, that death is not the end, that we have hope in, for the future, that we will be reunited with Paula and with other loved ones in your heavenly kingdom. We look forward to the day when you come to take us all home. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Bobby is going to sing for us and uh, give a few of his thoughts about his love for Paula. I don't think I can add much more to what, Paul, what uh, Tom has said here. Those who knew Paula before she got sick, they knew what kind of person she was. She was a people person. Even when she ran the shop, there were 30 years. It was more than just a business to her. It was a relationship business. Even the people would come in, sometimes would just come in and, and talk to her, or, you know, just to be with her. And, you know, that is to have somebody that you, like that shop was like a home to her and the people that came in the shop with her. Yeah, Paula was a wonderful person. Yeah, we doing a lot of camping. She loved camping as well as I did. And uh, we uh, camped quite a bit. And uh, a lot of time we went to Stone, Stone Mountain State Park up there. And any, anybody ever been up there, that's a big old huge granite. And we walked across that thing, I don't know how many times. One time we walked up there with uh, Tom and Debbie Chin, and they had this little uh, Bassett Hound. And that poor little old dog, he walked all the way across it, but he let the died going across there. But they, he made it. <laughs> the last camping trip we did uh, up that Stone Mountain there, uh, Paula's still, you know, feeling bad, you know, but she wasn't down. And so she, uh, we walked, went back across that mountain again. And so we, we got all the way, went all to, down to the falls and started back. And we got all the way back to the old home place there. And just so happened there was this uh, uh, one of the workers, I guess. And so he, uh, he gave us a ride back to our camp and camp uh, site. And so we didn't have to walk that far, but it, it was it's one of a trip anyhow. But other trips, you know, I remember this other trip we went on to, uh, it was, I, uh, uh, excuse me a minute, I, I'm, not, my, I'm not thinking straight lately, uh, Lucas, and Lucas was down there at the lake down there, and Lucas went and found an old rope or something other, and it, he, he tied it down there and then tied it up there, and Paula, she was, Climbing back up the hill on that, that, on that thing, I still remember that. that I wish I'd had uh, had the still had the picture there to show you something like that. But she was just something climbing that, at uh, back up the hill there. It also, you know, I, I looked through some pictures that was we got at the house, and I saw some of them that we had our outings with our church family, uh, and it was also we always had a a good relationship with our church family. Um, just like Tom said, uh, nobody that knew Paula uh, knew, they knew what kind of person she was, that she was warm-hearted, loving toward anybody, and most especially to her family and stuff. And she was, her pride was in her grandchildren too, uh, Lucas and uh, Piper. Me and Paula, we was on an outing that, with the church family. And we, that was my first meeting with her, actually. And we went to the Great, Mo Great Smoky Mountain Railroad up there. And, and you know, then one thing, that's when I met her in uh, in 2004, 
and one thing led to another, and it wasn't long until we joined our forces together. And, and you know, we've had some ups and downs, and uh, had some good, real good times. Especially, you know, we, we went on a, a mission trip like Tom May, and that was a wonderful experience. I wouldn't change it a bit. It was hot and tired, and we worked. We worked with a. It was 15 or 17. Uh, kid from Mount Pisgah Academy, and you never heard a gripe complaint out of no, out now, neither one of them. And they would play hard and they work hard. And we helped build a church over there and do it. And they didn't have the modern equipment we got here. I mean, they'd done stuff by hand. If you believe it, we had a, we had a ladder, a homemade ladder, it was like a three prong, and that's what they climbed up on there. And we had the uh, they were building the columns for the church, and they had the, had a casing up there. They c climbed up that thing on a five-gallon bucket and poured it down there, and they got it. But I'll tell you what, there's this one, this one guy, uh, I call him Speedy. He would get that wheelbar, and he would fly in that thing. But, uh, but we met a lot of good people there. Some of we know, we, we didn't have a, you know, we had a lang language barrier, but when we was getting ready to leave at the last day, I seen this one guy, he had tears in his eyes. And, you know, but we worked together and, you know, things. But we, like I said, I wouldn't change the experience for us because I, I loved it. I would like to go again, but uh, things happen. All of us 11 person. You can't say much more about her like than that, but she was. Yeah, we was married on April the 4th in 2004. And uh, it was later on, that's when we went to mission trip. But you know, it's a great loss. A big loss. I don't know what tomorrow brings, but People keep telling me I'll get through it. <coughs> you always like my music. Sometimes it's just me and her to get together, and we just, sometimes she'd sing, some some she wouldn't, but we did it together. God should to long have been buried.
think everyone that thought enough of Paula and us to, and the family to come out and share this time with you. So it's a grieve, grieving time, but it, like I said, Tom says, it's a joyous time, time either that we have time to remember. Might be out of, might be out of sight, but not out of our minds. Thank you all much. Thank you, Bobby. All I love to hear Bobby sing. I'd like to invite you to bow your heads with me as we close the service today. Our wonderful Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you that we've each had a relationship with our dear sister Paula. We thank you that she loved Jesus and he loves her and he loves each one of us. And I pray that each of us will give our hearts to you I pray that as we go our own ways, that we will keep a warm place in our heart for Paula and that all of us will be able to see her again soon in your heavenly kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to ask that you remain seated while the family is escorted into the room here on the side. And there's gonna be a time of visitation uh, and when, uh, when they're in there, I think you're going to be escorted through this room instead of out the rear doors. So God bless every one of you. Thank you.